guys. Here's a line.
Who's online? If you're online, I don't know if this is working. Trying another setup tonight. Let me know if it works. Let me know if you can hear me or see me or anything. If you can't, well, I'll just sit here and play for myself. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, thanks, Sydney. Cheers, man. What are you up to tonight or well, today? Where, whereabouts are you? Thank you. Pro, I, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Progart01. Progart01. Excellent. <laughs> Cousin the Pro. How's it going out there in Cairns? It's a bit hot down here tonight. Almost, uh, almost Cairns weather down in Melbourne. Just, um, yeah. Who's my favourite keys player? Oh, it's like trying to pick your favourite child. Um, favourite keys player? Look, um, Herbie Hancock is kind of no, probably, you know, probably getting right up there. So I reckon probably, probably Herbie um, in the, but, you know, there's so many. There's, uh, you know, guys like Oscar Peterson in the jazz world. So Oscar and Benny Green and um, yeah, those, those cats in the jazz world. But of course, you know, everyone, Keith Jarrett, Chick Corea, um, all those guys are great as well, but but Herbie's kind of Herbie's probably the biggest the biggest influence I'd say. So yeah, if I had to pick one, I'd prob probably be Herbie. I'd say yeah. Uh, UK on a Saturday morning. Oh wow, what time is it? What time is it there? It must be what is that ten or something? I don't know. Beautiful in Cairns. A little rain. Seven gigs a week. <laughs> Man, I'll have to uh, I'll have to move back if there's seven gigs a week again. It was um. It used to be like that back in the back in the day it was a, a certainly a lot uh 11.05 in in the uk oh cool oh it's uh, quite respectable nice well it's uh yeah, it's a balmy night here in melbourne just uh noodling around we're still in uh, uh slowly making our way out of out of covid lockdown maybe tomorrow it's going to be a bit more uh a bit more uh, chilled. I think they're going to get rid of some of the mask laws, so we won't be uh, having that strapped to our face all the time, quite so much. But um, I guess we'll see. It's kind of up and down all over the world at the moment. So I hope everyone's staying safe wherever you are. Vincent, hey man, thanks for all the inspiration over the years. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for uh, supporting the channel. I appreciate it. Excellent. We're about to you, Vincent. Cousins of Prey, they don't play that well. I was doing 11 a week in the 80s in Cairns. Wow. There you go. 11 a week. They were the days. 
were they um were they bar gigs mainly or they're uh, all sorts of things i imagine like corporates and weddings and and everything i just bring up a little um <clears throat> so that thing that i was noodling around on then that was keyscape spectrosonics keyscape on the roads the roads down here <laughs> And Trillion, the new Trillion 1.5 update. Bass. It's actually really nice. Um, it's really nice on, on Trillion. I'm not sharing my screen tonight because I'm not doing any putting together any tracks or anything. I'm just having a bit of a noodle around. But um, there's a really nice uh, sample in the new Trillion of um, Marcus Miller playing Fretless. And it's a really beautiful sound. Let me see if I can fire it up here. Uh, model. Where are we? Bass, fretless. There we go. Uh, Marcus. It's a really nice sound. That's not it. <laughs> Let me switch that over. To trillion and in this controller. There we go. It's quite nice. You're in New York, Vincent. Wow. Excellent. What time's it over there? I have to, have to get my, my world clock up here. Um, bought a Moog and then found your channel shortly after. I've been following Funky Grooves ever since. Oh, great. What, which Moog did you buy? Did you get a, a Sub 37 a, or Subsequent 37 or uh, one of the other uh, the other ones? 18 months. You grow. Uh, oh, cool. Great. With Tom. Tom Sepoy. Very nice jazz piano player from up uh, Cairns, North Queensland, Australia. Oh, that's great. Progart01. Tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, how do you find the Trillion 1.5 update? Significant improvement. I understand they have Fender bass now, probably jazz bass or precision model. Um, yeah, I'm finding it really good. I love, um, so I'm not sure if you've got uh, the other Spectrosonics products like Keyscape and omnisphere but they sort of had a had a really they've brought a really good layout that you can find sounds and, and hone in exactly what you want sort of sonically um and trillion was the old design so they've updated it now so it's the new one they've put i think they've got some new sounds in there as well the interface is completely redesigned it's so it's up to date it's really works really really well and yeah there's there's um I'll, i'm not really sure comparing it i haven't compared it to the old one as far as the differences but i know the new one is has got a lot of cool stuff so as i said i'm not sharing the screen tonight so but you know just looking at the sounds here um yeah for for bass instruments now for yeah there's definitely there's definitely fenders. There's clean Fender Jazz. So. So yeah, there's a heap of um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's Fender Jazz. I'm not sure. If there's. There, I think there would be Precision as well. That that original one that I was using was one of the old sounds. Um, I think it was a. I think that was a precision actually. Can't remember what it's called, but it's um yeah. I'm pretty sure this precision sounds in here as well. So it's just so many sounds now, man. They're, they're they're it's pretty incredible. It's got all the old ones from you know trilogy and 
all the way right through. So studio, yeah, it's like studio bass, which is really, you know, that's a lot, lot brighter active sort of. Much brighter sound, but um, I, lo I love the, the retro sort of, um, oh, they've got like Hofner. pretty cool but um yeah the real old old school ones are great as well pretty good for i mean you know keyboard keyboard bass library it sounds amazing and the acoustic sounds are a scary a scary good for um you know amazing yeah certainly do the job what time do the strippers come on mate you think you've got the wrong internet web you got the wrong website up mate but um you know full marks for uh, trying certainly i'm not certainly not stripping not getting paid enough for that. You'll get over it. Yeah, some great sounds. Just running off my headphone lead here. It's always uh, always a good vibe. What else is in here? something for everyone sort of the old trilogy um jaco sounds
Korg Op Six. Any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, the new the new FM uh, synth from Korg. Yeah, it looks great. It looks cool. It's the same chassis and build and everything as the uh, Wave State that I've got up here. Um, so I kind of wish. I mean, I love I love FM synths. They sound um, you know it's amazing and it's great to see my manufacturer. I've been saying for ages. I wish a manufacturer would actually take fm and do a modern take on it and and really make a synth that you could dig into and with lots of real-time controls and you know really manipulate the sound a lot more than the old school 80s ones so it's great to see Korg did that i just wish um being a being a player i mean you know everyone's obviously got different styles and that but you know being more of a a live player and that i just wish it had a bit a few more keys like i would have loved to see a, a, a 61 key version or Maybe, or even a 49 key version so maybe they'll come out with that at some point i'm not sure but um yeah it would have been great to have a few more keys because i love you know digging into those those great fm sounds they're just so expressive across the whole keyboard so you know right down low you get that nice sort of bite and then you know up high you get it's just nice to have that range so three octaves i find for like for the wave state i kind of get it because you know it's a lot of arpeggiated stuff and wave sequencing you can just you can hold stuff down it sounds incredible but um yeah for an fm synth i would have liked to to have a few more you know they've got so much awesome hands-on control and you can manipulate the sound in so many different ways it would have been great to actually being able to dig in with a few more keys but maybe in the future who knows and you can always i mean you can always hook it up like i've got the wave state hooked up to the other keys in here so you can always hook it up to a controller or whatever and get more more keys out of it so it'll be interesting to see if korg do um module versions of like the wave state and the op6 and whatever you know it seems to be a bit of a they seem to be liking that form factor and that chassis so it'll be interesting to see if they actually end up um end up you know putting out some modules or putting out some bigger versions of them as well so because i think the op6 would really lend itself like sonically it, it sounds great um, I haven't had a chance to play one in the flesh yet. I'm not sure if they're in Melbourne yet, but uh, from what I've heard online, they sound pretty good. Mm. Simon, g'day. Simon, whereabouts are you in the world? Fancy a nice little felt piano. Some score currently has a cool one for free. Well, you want to check it out sometime? Cool, all right. I'm pretty, um, yeah, I've got a lot of felt I've got a lot of felt piano <laughs> libraries at the moment, but um, you know we'll uh, we'll see. So what's actually I've got a there's a nice um it's a nice felt piano. It's a cool that might be a cool sound to have a bit of a noodle around with. I've got the um, what's the name of it? Spitfire Audio put out one fairly recently. I'll uh, see if I can fire it up actually. It's in um. It's not terribly expensive. I think it was only about 29 bucks. They've got their series of like, you know, they've Spitfire have got their, their larger libraries that can go into, you know, thousands of dollars. And then they've got their, um, their sort of, uh, well, I can't, can't remember what the name of the series is, but they're all 29 bucks. It's like a epic strings and brass and whatever. And they're about, they're sort of cut down versions, but using a lot of their, their cool samples and that. So see if I can find it here and, uh, so I haven't had a real good play around with it. It's interesting that you said about that um, felt piano because I just got that this the other day and I haven't actually played around with it much at all. So I'm going to fire it up here, see if this works. It works. There we go. Let's see if I can make something up with this. All right. Let's see what this sounds like. It's nice. So like a little bit more direct sound. So how do I just put the condenser mic up? I guess let's have a look here. Something a bit, um, a little bit closer. Let's see. 
It's a pretty nice sound, that. Very nice. Cool. Where were we up to? Selena Cross. Hi, Mike. Hi, Selena. How are you? Good to see you. The Originals. Yes, that's it. Spitfire Original Series. You're absolutely right. Yes, there's some some great. There's some cool things in there. I haven't got them all, but I've got some. Um... So that was the felt piano. Just turning into a little. Little demo. Not I'm not sponsored by these guys. I'm just or any of these people. I'm just uh just firing up because you reminded me. Let's have a look. Where was that? Originals felt. So this is like there's some strings as well, you know. I don't have my um volume controller hooked up at the moment, but they they sound pretty happening it's like i mean these are all 29 bucks which is you know For 29 bucks can't really go wrong can you sounds incredible cool all right so then I just got a d70 d70 emulator as in like 
a D70, like like emulates a Roland D70, like a Roland D50, D70, is that, is that what you mean? Do you mean software? I'm intrigued. D70. Arthur, nice expression. Yeah, it's the expressive instrument. You've got to have express. It's all about expression. You know, you know, if it's got a pocket, you've got to make it groove, you've got to make it feel good. And if it's something that's like that, like slower and more expressive, you've, you've got to, you, you know, you've got to play expressively without pocket, without expression means nothing. Oh, thanks, Charlotte. Charlotte Jane, nice to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Spitfire stuff is impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot, and there's, some of it's, you know, really pricey, but it's, it's I've, uh, something about the, the ones that I've got, I've got, I've got a really organic quality to them. They're really, they've got a really, uh, what's the word? I don't know. They don't sound overly produced or anything. They just have this rawness to them. I'm, I'm a big fan of, it's like why I like the Nord stuff compared to, you know, for pianos and, and whirlies and clavs and stuff. Um, you know, compared to some of the other manufacturers that, that do similar stage pianos, Nord have, they're more raw sounding. So they're not perfect. They're not, in, in a good way. Like, you know, because real instruments aren't perfect. You know, you play a Rhodes, you play a piano, they're going to have some notes that, speak differently to other notes you can have certain notes that you know and so a bit of rawness is a good thing i like imperfections because that's what makes makes it beautiful uh, progart your piano playing is hypnotizing oh well i hope i hope in a good way it's like you know i won't i won't send you any uh, any bad requests while you're uh, while you're under <laughs> time did a movie store what score wayne oh yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be good. Done bits and pieces along the way. Done smaller things, smaller films, and um, uh, different different bits and pieces. But no, uh, no feature films yet. Yamaha Yamaha D seventy emulator. Yamaha, I'm I'm intrigued. The sting cover. Okay. Excellent. Oh, my skills. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, thanks, Selena. Said Selena, said, great setup, by the way. Absolutely awesome. Does the job. Does the job for me. Spitfire is great, but it takes some skill to bring that out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think with as with all um, all of these software libraries, you really need to learn. You know, you need to learn how to. They're, they're, they vary in complexity, especially the orchestral libraries and the string libraries. They get they have different amounts of. You know, some of them go really nuts with the key switching and so you know you get all different articulations depending on the controllers and the left hand so it becomes a real coordination exercise you need to learn how to use it properly um, and then some libraries are simpler that just rely more on how you play to get different articulations or one thing or another so i you know i think you can you can sort of go too far in either direction it can be too simple or can sometimes get too complicated depending on what you want to do but yeah, for what for what I've found with Spitfire, I find they're quite. They seem to, for what I like to do, they seem to run the, just that nice line of, I can get enough expression quickly enough. I don't have to spend three hours trying to figure out which key switches do what and and programming everything to get a, a usable result. A oh, DX7 emulator. Yeah, now now you're talking. Cool. Which which one did you get? Uh, there's a few out there. There's Arturia and Native Instruments. and There's a free one called... I can't remember. Someone will be able to point that out. But it's really good. I've got it, actually. It works quite... Dext. That's it. It's very good. Fragile. As in, that's the name of the emulator or, or the song? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to... Um, what are the piano sounds? Oh, there's a really nice talking. Speaking of pianos, I'm going to fire up the uh, piano in blue because that's super cool. That's the Bill Evans piano from Kind of Blue. I wonder if I've got that. Where's that? That'll be in contact. So, soft synths. There we go. <laughs> right. Where is it now? 
There we go, piano in blue. It's pretty cool. some of this room sound in there and uh, yeah let's give that a shot see how that sounds put it on the tape so this is apparently this is the actual piano that Bill Evans played on Miles Davis Kind of Blue recorded through the desk the same tape, the same tape machine and everything I'll put this on it should sound something similar sound isn't it just need a bit more reverb on that let's get so you can actually dial in the actual room reverb from the room mics so why don't we put it in mono get the real effect because it was all recorded in mono so switch over to the mono samples I think it translates better in stereo actually for what we're doing using the tape. I want to take the tape off. Sounds quite nice. Put the reverb on. Alright, let's see how this, this sounds. Yeah, that's, that's nice. sound definitely ah oh, cool where do we leave off here um yeah. so oh arturia right we're talking about dx7s cool 
Yeah, the Arturia one's great. Yeah, might fire that up next. I've got you know got way too many soft synths. That's good. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna I'm, before I read the rest of these messages, I'm gonna I'm gonna put an Arturia DX7 in here because we need a bit more DX7 electric piano. There's gonna be at least one person will be triggered by that. Let's uh, let's have a look here. Uh, here we go. Get ready. Any moment now. Need a sparklier one, even even more sparkly than that. I think there should be one in here in the uh, in the old key section. Eighties FMEP. Oh, that, that's got to be it, right? There. It is. Oh, way too much phaser on that. What's going on? Who programmed that sound? Let's turn that off. Where's the effects in here? Phaser, get rid of that. Empty, that's better. Here we go. Needs, needs even more chorus. Not that much chorus. <laughs> I don't like that chorus at all. Turn it off. I want to. What do I want to do? There's a great free chorus actually out there. If I can remember what it's called here, it is. Got it right here. Made by Tal T A L. It's basically modelled off a, um, a Juno 106, and it sounds really good. There it is. Look at that. Perfect. Exactly. What that sounds. That excellent bit of reverb. Let's get a bass sound going on Trillion here. So where's the nocturne? There's summit. There we go. And this will be the Nord stage. Okay, so technically this should work. Yeah. No, we just need to get a bass sound. What bass sound? Something, something a bit eighty. Something with a, or maybe some slap. Ooh, that could be that could be completely wrong. Maybe a oh synth bass. Yeah, what have we got here? Side. All right. That's two seventies. We need something a bit more eighties. Something like um. These are, these are far too 70s. Something really digital. Here we go. <laughs> Not that digital. <laughs> uh, all right. Any of these? Oh, that's kind of cool. Thank you. 
that's fine. Need a bit more sustain on that uh, that DX7 sound, but that's enough DX7 electric piano for now. All right, who we got here? Jeremy Diffie. Hey, hey, mate. Hey, hey, Jeremy. How are you, mate? What are you up to this evening? Having a gin, I hope. Cheers. Uh, was for Debbie. Oh, what a song. That's it. You, yeah, I obviously read that too. Hails for the for the piano, the Bill Evans piano. That would have been perfect. Cool. Arthur says, I remember when the DX7 came out. Pianist friend had one. Used to jam with him and jazz blues. Yeah, I mean the DX7. That was it. Was a game changer when it came out. It was the. It was all the rage. It was was what it was all about. Uh, nice keyboard. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful keyboard. Really nice on the DX, the original DX7 in the 80s. It had a really nice feeling, um, really nice feeling keys. And um, yeah, except that it had a velocity issue that the velocity wouldn't go over MIDI. It wouldn't go all the way to 127. So it made it a bit of a pain for a controller keyboard, but it felt really good to play. And no one knew how to program. Yeah, no one knew how to. No one still knows how to program. Let's face it. Properly, there's probably the amount of people in the world that can really program a DX7 from the front panel and make really awesome sounds. Probably count on the fingers of one hand. I certainly can't. Uh, Cousin Dupree, Mike, have you had any time with the Vienna Symphonic Library? No, I haven't. I I heard I heard it's very good. I I haven't had any experience with Vienna, but I've uh, I've heard good things. There's a lot of people that swear by it. So. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be very good. Arthur, uh, mono positions, piano well back in the 60s. That's right. Yep, everything was back in recorded in mono back in those days. Progart says, love the sound of the EP in the DX7. Yeah, it's it's one of those sounds. It's funny, you know, it became really uncool in the 90s and, and the, you know, I guess the early 2000s to use that sound it was like oh everyone used to complain about it but it's uh, you know it sounds great it's always sounds beautiful put some chorus on it it's a really really nice sound uh dx7 was a very high was very high quality at the time put everything else the same absolutely yeah still i mean that you it's just a testament you know you see how many are kicking around still now there's tons man you go on you know eBay or Gumtree, there's always a couple of DX7s for sale. They're still they're still going strong. You know the batteries give out after a while, and the and the the L uh, what do you call it the displays give out, but people replace them and they're they're still kicking on solid metal, providing it doesn't rust away. Uh, Korg released the M1. Yeah, I mean the M1, the M1 was you know that was samples, wasn't it? it was was well, samples? Yeah. So that you know went from FM synth to to samples, and uh, and the Roland D50 as well was was a sort of a intermediary it was like a stepping stone between um synthesis and, and samples you know they sampled the attack portion of the sound in the roland d50 so that was a sample but it was really really short small like little tiny bits of memory and then the sustained portion of the sound was um was uh what do you call it, it was programmed it was synthesized so but yeah the, the korg m1 that was that was a huge hit for korg massive very cool. Hearing Whitney, <laughs> yes, Whitney on the uh, on the DX7, some classic stuff. Juno 106 chorus, it's so good. The Juno one, it's it just works so well on everything. Like you know, you can pull up any kind of sound. If I just want a, a go-to plug-in chorus, I just use that the DX uh, the Juno chorus pretty much because it just works really really nice. And you can you know mess with. It's very simple, as you know, on a, on a real. Um, Juno, you've got two buttons, and you can either have number one in, number two in, or you can press them both in at the same time and get a really huge chorus. So you can do that on this as well. Let's just turn it off here. And I'm just going to get a bit of, let's see if I can get a better electric piano sound. So that's not it on this uh, DX. Anything on this DX? DX sounds. Here we go. Just gonna mess with this a bit. Feedback, get a bit more. That'll do. Let's show you this chorus. So, oh, I didn't have it fully. There we go. So, this is off. Where are we going here? And then uh, position one. 
position two, both of them in. It's quite quite big, so yeah, put them both in like that. Probably too big. I'll turn just turn that down a bit. And then there's some reverb on that, something like um, Valhalla Vintage Verb, like an 80s plate or something like that would sound pretty good. So Valhalla Vintage Verb, and I'll put a, like a 1980s, what have we got, there we go. Should sound pretty eighties. sound cool sound how do we get onto that oh we're talking about yeah DX, dx7s El Zero, yeah absolutely original 106 chorus is a bit noisy uh was a, yeah yeah absolutely yeah so the original so here you go here i can tell you exactly what the original 106 chorus sounds like because they've they've modeled the chorus in the in the system eight and they've even modeled the noise so so if we if we go over and switch over to the system 8 engine here should be able to hear this so I'll turn it to the, over Not sure if it's coming over. Not sure if it's coming over uh, the internet, but you should be able to hear that that hiss going between the left and right channels. So it's uh, they've modelled everything down to the hiss. But yeah, it's it's quite noisy, but it sounds it sounds cool.
good job on that. I've got to say, Roland, they've got the got definitely got the vibe there. Mm-mm-mm. Hugo, g'day, mate. How are you? 8:47 a.m. in Buenos Aires. Wow, you're up early. Good morning. Good to see you too. Cool. That's way too much hiss. Now we'll get rid of that. Ah, oh, that's better. See, the beauty of modern technology, you can just dial out the noise as much as you want. Dial it into taste. Where is the summit? The summit's right here. Right there. All right. Let's, um, let's play something on the summit. Switch over to that. All right, here we go. All right. sounds gorgeous for pads and those big sort of sci-fi pads works really well yeah it's a beautiful sounding synth man i love it absolutely love it so yeah digital oscillators analog filter such a great combination just killer effects great you know everything everything just sounds good doesn't matter what you you play it just randomly hit you know find the sound
love that it can get so digital as well as being so analog and go the, go the whole gamut from one to the other. It's super versatile. It's very cool. Steve Miller, Book of Dreams versus Human League matchup. <laughs> oh, cool. Sweet. Oh, well, guys, thanks for tuning in. It's been a bit of a uh, bit of a random Saturday night hang. So I hope you're all keeping well. And uh, if no one's got any other requests, I'll uh, noodle my way out. Feel free to ask any questions before I head off, though. What could be a cool little something here? Oh, thanks, Arthur. Thanks for tuning in, man. Appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna finish up with a bit of uh, bit of keys game. Some nice little uh, something funky. What can we? I finish with a. Uh, let's have a look. Some acoustic bass on Trillion. That's not acoustic bass. Right. There we go. What's my favorite keyboard? Oh, what's my favorite? Oh, that's that's an impossible that's an impossible question. I couldn't tell you. You have to be a bit more specific. So like favorites, uh, Analog synth favorite. Well, I don't know. Bring it funk. <laughs> what about some acoustic funk? Something a bit different. Something rather than just you know, I'm gonna use some acoustic piano, and acoustic bass. Let's do something. I've always loved that that sort of combo. So rather than like Rhodes and electric bass, let's do something. Uh, let's have a look. Keyscape. Just a nice acoustic piano. There we go. Play something funky with that. Where's that sound coming from? A reverb on that.
And that's a wrap. <laughs> Trilo, yeah, uh, Trillion. Yes, that's uh, it is indeed Trillion. This is Trillion 1.5, latest one. Just waking up and I'm late, Thomas. <laughs> Just caught the end, mate. That's all right. How are you all going? Where, where, where's everyone that's just tuned in, tuning in from? Maybe I'll pour one more glass of wine and uh, and chill out with you all before I go to bed. Is it, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, soda, 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 S-O-D-E-R? Where are you guys tuning in from? Canada, Ronan, welcome. How's it all going over there? Hope hope everyone's staying safe with the uh, the COVID craziness in the world right now. It's, uh, seems quite intense. Apples, Florida, welcome. Sweden, ah, oh, the whole world's here. It's awesome. Oh, cheers, everyone. Nice to see you all. Ah, right. That makes more sense. Apples. Cool. Yeah, yeah it's... Um... Oh, no worries, Charlotte. Thank, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, Damien Trillion. Yeah, it's it's pretty... I think it's it's the best for that I've heard for, for acoustic bass anyway. It's just so... So on the money.
Oh, Thomas. <laughs> awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate it. Very cool. Thank you very much. Um, what's the piano patch? That's uh, so it's Keyscape. I think it's the natural natural piano is my sort of go-to. I'm pretty sure that's what's loaded up. Yeah, this LA Custom C7 natural patch. Oh my god, this is far. Oh, thank you, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bass sound is awesome. How good is it? How cool is that bass sound? I don't know. It just blows me away. Yeah, you know, sorry to any acoustic bass player friends of mine. You know, I'm not. Um, I'm not having a laugh. It's. I think it's. I think it's quite cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. What's the C7 Indie? Let's have a look at that. You've got me intrigued now. C7. Is there an Indie? Indie. Here we go. Which one's this? I don't think I've used this one before. I definitely haven't. It's a. It's just one sound like. It's very similar, isn't it? That's weird. Hang on, have I got that selected? Yeah, yeah that was a very good guess. It's it's very close. I wonder how this differs. Let's have a look. So it's slightly more compressed, so maybe like a little bit more of like a like a pop thing. But that'll work, yeah. That sounds great. nice sound i don't know why i haven't used that before yeah it's just got a little bit more of sort of punch for for pop stuff it's cast three la custom c7 indie very cool i like it good ears man good ears it's quite close to the uh to the natural one natural one's just a bit bit more natural it's just got a bit less compression a bit less uh, a bit more dynamic range and stuff but no that that'd sit beautifully in a in a pop mix just roll off some of the bottom end and you'd be right there for sure well that actually makes me want to just jam along with something from pick a sound in trillion and uh have a hit what we got here maybe like a a muted bass what about like a not that <laughs> that's pretty cool oh i like that that's good let's go with that one and i'm just going to go back to that trillion uh sorry the keyscape sound it's going to wind off some of that bottom end just so it doesn't get in the way Yeah, that should sound good together. Yeah. A bit more reverb on that piano.
sounds work really, really nicely together. Very cool. Cool. Oh, well, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you're all staying safe, staying healthy, and uh, surviving lockdown if you're in one of those lockdown-affected areas. Thomas, those bass sounds are so realistic. Wow. All I had was my Roland D50, then later try the Technics w, WR1SA. Not a patch on those sounds. Well, well, I mean, the Roland D50 is killer. It's a great synth, but I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, compared to we're talking multi gigabyte samples versus the whole sample library of the D50 was like, you know, tiny. So, you know, a lot of lot of move, improvements in technology, but D50 does some killer, killer, killer sounds for um for what it does. But yeah, the Technics WR1SA, I've never heard of, man. There you go. You've you've found a keyboard that I've I've never heard of. Congratulations. It's um yeah, not familiar with that one. WR1SA. I'm gonna have to Google that after and check it out. What tell me about the, the Technics WR? What was it? A, is it a module or a keyboard or what what are we talking like D fifty so is that like nineties? Early early nineties? I'm gonna look it up. You've got me intrigued now. You are one SA. Let's have a look. Oh, it doesn't exist according to Google. You, you've you've it's either a typo or you've you've got a very, very rare keyboard. <laughs> But yeah, these sounds are pretty. They're pretty killer. I mean, that's it's my favorite. I'd say my favorite bass synth and my favorite um, keyboard library would be Spectrosonic stuff. So, again, you're not paying me to say that. It's bought with my own hard-earned cash, and um, yeah, they sound great. They're really, really good. They're very inspiring to play too. They feel feel organic. They feel like an instrument. So you don't feel like you're playing a synthesizer. You feel like you're uh, playing the real stuff cool all right guys well i might uh, put a pin in it there for this evening unless anyone's got any other questions but thank you all for tuning in i'm going to do this on a on a regular basis going forward i'm thinking um oh thanks Ronan. you too man yeah i'll, I'll advertise when these streams are going to go i'm going to do one every week i think uh I was trying to find the best time for everyone that's uh, all the followers on different platforms. So I'm thinking Mondays. Is it Monday around, uh, I think it was Monday around 11 p.m. Melbourne time seemed to be the most popular choice for, for most people. So I'll double check that. I'll put a little notice up. Hopefully you can all tune in and uh, yeah, we'll have some, have some different hangs every week. All right. Thanks again. Nice to see you all. Look after yourselves. Thanks, Thomas. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye for now.